graduates and guests, welcome to the University of Washington's 146th Commencement Ceremony, honoring the graduating class of 2021. Now entering our candidates for the various doctoral and professional degrees. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Jeff Bachman and Lupita Santian. Jeff is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Rehabilitation Science. Lupita is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, School Psychology. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Pharmacy is Lindsay Maritza Henderson. Lindsay is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Pharmaceutics. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Dentistry is Jamar Vincent Golveo. Jamar is graduating today with a Doctor of Dental Surgery. Well, Joy, graduates, students uh, graduating right now, this, uh, it's quite impressive, isn't it? It is incredibly impressive. This, these are our professional and doctoral degree candidates. That means that these people have spent five, six, seven years in their programs. They are incredibly resilient. Look at these happy faces. And I love that they showed up in regalia as they well. They did, and the different colors of the tams they're wearing, or not the tams, but the, the hoods that they're wearing signify where the, the unit where they got their degrees, and so it's actually telling. It wasn't a fashion choice. It's actually part of their regalia. That distinguishes whether they got a, a, a DDS, which is this, the farm D, these are doctoral uh, degrees, as well as the PhD in different um, departments. Um, so these people are going to go off, they're going to be doing research, they're going to join faculties, they're going to be entrepreneurs. Um, these have been some hard working folks who have had to change their methodologies and deal with a pandemic that was incredibly disruptive for their research programs. But look at, look at this amazing group. It's amazing because you're almost witnessing the next generation who's going to help us get through all of this. Oh, and yeah, so it, I feel like this is the inspiration. These are the next set of leaders that Candidates we need Candidates for right the various now. master's degrees are now entering. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Kudi Yen and Maya Escovedo. Kudi is receiving a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering. Maya is graduating with a Master of Social Work, Administrative and Policy Practice. interesting to me is that uh, this is such a traditional ceremony where we're in middle-aged garb from the time of Europe and yet these incredible colors not just in terms of the wardrobe but the people who are represented the diversity we've come a long way we have, we have come a long way we have ways to go but we have come a long way and again, I just look at all of these faces and I am just blown away I'm so eager to see what they're going to be able to do, what they're going to be doing with their degrees. They're going in so many different directions. We heard from our two student athletes, they're going to graduate school too. And one of them here at the UW. Yeah, glad we're so we'll around. see him in a couple of years, hopefully in person. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope he continues growing as well. <laughs> you know, uh, given that this is such, I mean, we're, everything's changing and everybody keeps talking about the next normal. Do you think we'll retain some of these traditions despite all the things that will come next? I hope so. One of the things that's happened, it's again an incredibly difficult time, but one of the silver lining pieces is that families have been able to participate in um, de uh, defenses for students who spent years preparing for their graduate degrees and they couldn't be here before. They would have required a flight from across the world, uh, from the East Coast, and so pe all these people were able to zoom in and participate and I think that's been amazing. Yeah, I love that access and equity that we've learned from this as well, Definitely. so that's been a benefit. So yeah, um, Definitely. I love that we've got this level of participation. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Joy. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Law is Jeef Chandra. Jeef is receiving a Juris Doctor. 
and I might as well bring you into this conversation. Yeah, we've been looking at mostly, obviously, grad from people from the graduate school, but you know, what's interesting is that a lot of these people have actually come through the pipeline of undergraduate at the University of Washington. Many people were wondering that higher education was going to be in for a reckoning through the pandemic and whether higher ed was going to be the value proposition will be there when it's all over. What's the, what, what level of demand are you seeing for undergraduate education at the University of Washington? When I hear that question, Hanson, I, I ask friends and colleagues and, and people in the community to just simply ask the students. The students are marching with their feet. They're, they're, they're marching with their, with their pens. They keep coming back to the university as we know it. And, and look at this graduating class. They've decided that, that this place and the physical place still, still matters. So as much as we want to think about the capacity we have to do this, this work virtually, we keep hearing over and over and over again that students, they're willing to do this if they need to. They're willing to do it as a sense of sacrifice, but they want to be together. And so I think students are telling us very clearly that community matters. Well, that's really interesting because, yeah, we want to be together, but we've also seen another way of doing it as well. So to either of you, what do you think might be different moving forward? Might we have more remote? Will be there be less foreign students, more foreign students? What might be different in a year or two from now? Oh, I, I'd hope there are not less international students <laughs> at undergrad or grad. They add so much to the university and they have been so isolated. I know that there's a group in China that is having um, watch parties and graduation parties. For the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance is Norma Patricia Sanchez Ortiz. She is receiving a Master of Public Administration, International Development. Well, now we're uh, at the Evans School, and uh, in many ways, what we need most is, uh, is a different kind of leadership. You know, I think what we've seen with the pandemic in countries around the world is that the countries that had the best sense of governance and, and leadership maybe did better than others that were just floundering around. And so, from a leadership point of view, what is unique about the University of Washington that we bring to, to challenges such as this and moving forward? Well, I think um, if this last year or two years has taught us anything, that being a public research university matters to our community. And, and it's not just abstract, that when you think about it, and think about the different majors that we've just heard about today and the dis different disciplines and their relevance right now. Law, public policy, the arts, the, the humanities, um, medicine. You go through all, and it used to be, years back, people would ask the question, well, what are you gonna do with a degree like this? Now, um, imagine reframing this and saying, think about the value of a degree now in, in sociology, in the arts, in law, in medicine, in public policy, in public health. All of these things and everything that these students are going to do matters now, and it matters in real pra in pragmatic ways now. And, and that's the value of being at a public research university now, that transition into and translation into how to make meaning of, of public service and public good. public lecture series for the grad school this year on coexisting COVID-19. What I loved about it is that we were serving our community. I mean, I think that's what a public research university does best. We rise to the occasion and we try to relieve the anxiety by bringing trusted research and information to our community. You must have felt very proud as the leader of the graduate school to be able to bring that research like that. So, so very proud. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences, including Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Bachelor of Music are now entering. Carrying the first of six gonfalons for the College of Arts and Sciences is Gargi Kerr, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and Applied Mathematics. Here come the undergrads. <laughs> I, 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 how many uh, how many commencement ceremonies have you attended during your time at the University of Washington? <laughs> Hanson, I'm going to age myself here. Um, I've been to 27. I, I, I started coming to 
um, commencements when I when I graduated as a, as a doctoral student and was the first in the family and I, and I felt like it was so special to put on a cap and gown. It just felt so so special. I told myself every opportunity I have I'm going to keep I'm going to keep coming. So I've come to every one and I'm sitting here in, in Sylvan Grove at this one and it's a virtual graduation but I'm still I'm still coming. I think they're yeah. important. Yeah and despite the fact that it is Sylvan I mean it is virtual we are here at Sylvan Grove and I think there's a certain level of gravitas and a sense of the moment by being here and by sharing this moment with everybody else around the world because this those pillars are, are, are a marker for where the first graduations used to happen for the University of Washington. I think, think about the values, loyalty, industry, faith, and efficiency of those of those pillars. I'm sitting next to Joy, you're, you're a historian, and I, and I want our students, all of them, undergraduate and graduate, to know that by virtue of the fact that you're sitting at your homes, you're sitting in your kitchens, you're sitting in your living rooms, um, maybe even sitting in your car. I saw some students, you know, viewing from their from their car wherever they are. That you're making history, and history will look back and, and realize this is your contribution to this moment. That you're making sacrifices that will serve the next generation of students, and we're grateful for that. Joey, you, Joey, you are a historian, and obviously it's it's always dangerous to reflect upon how history will look at this moment. But this has been a reckoning as well historically. Uh, what what have you thought about it? even put your mind to what will history say about us? I cannot wait to see what history <laughs> says about this moment. I'm actually really curious to find out how they are going to teach about it in K through 12 also, but how, how it will change the way higher education looks. Not all of it. There is deep value to being in person. Um, through all, for all the reasons that Ed has talked about and many, many others. But I do think it has taught us that we can learn and be in community in new and different ways. So I think it's democratized higher education in a way, uh, and that more students can participate um, from across the globe. Again, there's power in being here, and we want them here. Um, but I do think it's, we are going to think in new and different ways about how to deliver it and experience it. That's, uh, Carrying the second gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences is Anna Lee, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Neuroscience and a Bachelor of Arts in Dance. So my, my two kids are too young to be quite ready for the University of Washington, one's 10, one's 13, but my younger son loves reading the I Survive series for kids, which are sort of reflections of history. And he reads about World War I, World War II, the Donner Party of all things. And I said, you know, what, in the middle of this, I said, one day there will be a book from yes. your, your kids, I Survive the yes. Global Pandemic of 2020. Yes. I mean, if you think about young people having to go through this, and, the resilience, I mean, what will they bring? What do you think the, our constituents, our stakeholders, our students will take away with them? I think that, I mean, if you didn't know you were resilient before, you know it now. I don't think any of us knew that we would be tested like this and be able to come through the other side. And I, I also have young kids. They are so much more independent um, and confident than they probably would have been, right? Because they had to start to figure things out um, on their own. And I think, look, with these undergrads, and again, with the grads, um, nobody knew this was going to happen. Um, but I will, I will put a plug in for history. All of you watching, write down your memories of this time right now. They're gonna blur later. They're gonna blur and be corrupted later. Write them down now. Make yourself a little, like a, what are those things that they, you bury them? Time capsule. A time, time capsule. capsule. Make yourself a time capsule. You are living through a unique and historical time. People will be asking you about this and people will be writing about this. You lived it. Claim it. Write down your memories now. Put it in a time capsule. Um, this is exactly what I've been doing with my family because we we forget, I, you know, how hard it was in the beginning of the pandemic. When I was, you know, I was, um, we were wiping down our groceries. Things have changed. Um, so remember, that's another way to remember this time, what it was like to be a student, because I guarantee you there are going to be some historians of education coming back to look through your memories and you'll end up in a book. Well, that's brilliant, because I remember, you know, if you think about talking to grandparents or great-grandparents about the Great Depression or World War II or whatever, and it's like, wow, oh, that must have been so incredible, because yeah. our lives are so normal with respect, with respect to that. But now, we are those people. And yes. so when we're, our, when we're older, people are going to ask us, what was it like to exactly. go through the pandemic? Exactly. So, yeah, no, that's a great reflection. I appreciate that, Joy. And so, yeah, write it down, everyone. Or, or put it in your tablet or put it in the cloud. Just make sure yeah. it endures. <laughs> Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences continue to enter, led by gonfalonier Madison McCann, 
was receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Scandinavian Area Studies and Math. That, that word, bon flaneur, and I, it's, I haven't really heard it that often. What, what, did, did either of you know the origins of that and, and how people get chosen for that role? So many of these traditions um, go back at, at our university, back to 1861, the commencement exercises, the very beginning of, 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 of our university. But the, the tradition of the regalia and the actual commencement ceremony goes back into the, to the 15th century, um, back, back to Oxford. And, and, and our students should, should feel glad because back in with the first graduates, in, uh, kind of first group that commenced from, um, from Oxford, they actually had to do sermons um, for graduation. They had to do them in Latin. So, so, so we should probably put that back in place so that um, for, next, for the class of twenty-two, well, Latin? for their second, well, <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> in Latin. So, so many of the traditions, and, and part of the reason we do this is I'm looking at all these students from the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, they're wearing their cap and gown. They have their tassels to the right. These are traditions that go back in time. That that help us remember that this is a three-dimensional activity. It is connected to the past and forever connects us to the past and traditions of the past and it connects us to the present and helps us to envision a future and so it it just the pomp and circumstances as we're listening to this music it it matters and it, and it means for our students to connect historically and that that notion of connect again it doesn't elevate us it connects us as we as we turn these tasks and yeah it gives us i mean that sense of community that comes from that common story right then that, that that sense of bond one thing we are missing is that if you were to have this in person there is the turning of the tassels right and so what is what is that meant to symbolize when you do switch the tassels from one side of the motherboard to the other? Traditionally, what they think that I, I think what they meant was to that we now become educators because those who were graduating back then were were, were then to go on to become teachers. Um, what I think they symbolize now, this isn't, I'm saying what I think, this is my opinion. <laughs> when we turn these tassels, it, it means that we have a responsibility to use these degrees to do good in the world and, and to do good for ourselves, to care for ourselves, to care for our communities, even if it means being good, good neighbors. Again, the turning of the tassel means not elevation, but, but connection and connection to doing good in the world. Absolutely, that community drive for our constituents as they go out there into the world. So, well said, Ed. Carrying the fourth gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences is Cameron Mullinex, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in History. Joy, Ed was just talking about that sense of responsibility and commitment that graduates generally are meant to take forward with them, even in non-historic times. Uh, how different do you think this particular cohort of graduates will feel in terms of their their sense of service. I mean, obviously we all want to make a good living and some of us try to pursue that in the jobs we look for, but uh, we've all had to really pull up together even if we've been separate in, uh, in, in this time. What might be different about this generation five or 10 years from now having gone through this? You know, I think they've already shown us. I think, I know that many of our students in nursing and uh, pharmacy and um, dentistry have been out in the community giving vaccines. Uh, we have graduate students working on the research that help develop those vaccines and other kinds of things that will help us in the medical, biomedical community. Um, and I they bring a sense of purpose because I've, we've all been struggling. And so not just in the health professions, but you'll see this also in social work. You'll see this also in education, undergrad and grad. Again, they have risen to the occasion as students and I'm sure they're going to take that same sense of personal responsibility and communal responsibility with them. This is, I think, the power, as what Ed was saying, of being at a public institution. This is our job. We don't just exist as some ivory, ivory tower separate from our community. We're here to help society in a variety of ways. And like I said, they have demonstrated it through cultural production, through research, um, and in a variety of other ways. And I'm sure that 10, they, 10 years from now, they will be these people still, which gives me great hope for the future. That's, yeah, I can see that. Uh, Ed, Ed Joyce talking about, about that, that sense of commitment and service, and you've talked about it as well, but in, in, the university is a public research university. It always, always has had that. Is there something we need to do to actually sort of underline it now? Do we need to renew our vows in terms of who we are as the University of Washington? I love that idea of renewing our vows, and that's exactly what we gotta do. 
and I think our students will be good ambassadors for both what it means to, um, to engage in work that, that has meaning. The fifth gun full on for the College of Arts and Sciences is Micah Enrique Lucignan Santiago, who's graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in English and Creative Writing. Well, I was, I was j joking with President Kelsey earlier on the purple carpet that you know the tagline for this graduation should be "Rise to the occasion." And I don't know whether we you know "Be Boundless" is our current tagline. I'll talk to Mary Gresh, our current head of marketing, and say, "Is it time to re rethink?" You know, because you know we are certainly boundless in our thinking. But my goodness, the energy and expertise and leadership this university brought to this pandemic—not just in our region but around the world—has been incredible. From IHME to to you know all the medical practitioners, but just thinking about what we need to do differently around this has been amazing to me. Yeah, it has been amazing. I think it's it's a perfect example of the power of the research enterprise, why research universities make such a difference um, and in the public good. This is really about the public good. Yeah. No, I, uh, during the COVID series, I was always pleased to see University of Washington being quoted by yeah. television stations, by the White House, but you know, even in the UK, we we clearly had that credibility and that resonance and. Um, it, it made me proud, but it also I also knew what had to go into that level of leadership. During the pandemic, we opened the Hans Rosling Center, the Population Health Center, right? This is the stuff that endures and continues despite everything. I think so what, was that's amazing, so what amazing. was amazing about all of that is the way that we talked about things that matter. Um, our colleague Hillary Godman, who's the Dean of Public Health, I was on phone lines with, with Hillary while she was talking to K-12 education and talking to teachers about how to get kids back into school. Those are cross-disciplinary kinds of conversations that are so valuable now. I think that is the power, uh, one unique power of the University of Washington, this, this um, drive for interdisciplinarity. Complex questions demand complex answers. You can't do it in silos. And so we have to have public health talking to education, talking to nursing, talking to social work. And I could go on down the line of all the colleges and schools. Um, it's necessary, and I think that is an amazing hallmark um, of the university. <laughs> it's also the antithesis to perhaps the one-liners we get in social media that's meant to condense and simplify everything to, to one thing, like it's the, like the, the Hail Mary kind of pass, when you have to have all of these different people coming together to come up with the solutions, like we've seen with the vaccines, for example. So yeah, I, uh, I think we have to make sure that the world is getting more complex and requires that level of collaboration, that level of, level of interdisciplinarity that we see especially at this university and that has done us proud for this moment. So it's been great to rise to the occasion. Carrying the final gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences is MJ Stroming, who's graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. And I'm curious, I mean, we're still watching undergrads here. Have you heard directly from our undergrad students over the, during, the, during this year? Um, have they reached out to you and asked you for counsel or support or to just even let them let you know what they're working on and what they're doing and what's different about this time? Joy and I have the pleasure of working with, with staff that are just so talented that are, that are engaged with students day to day. And, I, and, I, and I'll be honest about this, um, Anson, that many of our students have reached out because this has really been a hard, hard year for them. And I think students have been really honest about, about two things. We're going to do the work, and we're going to do the work virtually. But this has been a really challenging time in in, in all of our in all of our personal lives. So students have reached out and, and been clear about that. But they've also been clear about how they need to connect with each other, keep each other healthy, and and really be the kind of community that rises to the challenge. So yeah, so we um, we were engaged with each other a lot during the course of the year, undergraduate and graduate students, about how to keep each other safe and how to keep each other well. We were in constant conversation with our with our students about how to move forward and and. And for the next generation of students so they could actually be together mm -hmm. and be on campus together and that's our hope yeah joy the you know graduate school obviously there's so many people who are actually involved in, in first-hand research and while we do expect her to be on campus again there may be changes to how we can research right that the expectations may be that not everything has to be first not everything has to be done in the field there are new ways to get the information that people need do you think that we'll see some innovation in how research itself is done out of this I think so I hope so I actually think interdisciplinarity is going to be one of the way one of the ways that we go um, in that regard and I think uh, trying to think about how to create 
robust student experiences. So part of it is like students might be choosing different topics, but part of it is about what the university needs to think about in terms of, all right, so how do we want to prepare the next generation of master's students or master, people who have master's degrees, people who have doctoral uh, degrees and other kinds of capstone degrees. Um, that we need to think through what are the kinds of experiences we want from them. Should we, change the, should we change the curriculum? Should we change the way we teach? Should we change the kinds of experiences that are required? And I think it's broken open a space for us to think in very creative ways about the future. Well, I'm looking forward to that creativity that just leads to new kinds of innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome bachelor's candidates from the College of Education led by Gonflanir Aditi Rajendran. Aditi is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Education Leadership, and Policy Studies. Well, the College of Education, I mean, this is super meta, <laughs> but education itself is gonna change. I mean, we, uh, Joy, you and I have young kids who have had virtual school, had to go back to school in very strange and stressful circumstances, and new practices are being deployed, and I think I'm on the board of my kids' school, so I get a sense of where the leadership is going with this. Uh, how much will education change, not at the university, but education generally? You know, I want to point out that Ed is a graduate of this College of Education. Oh boy, I asked the wrong person. Yes. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> I also have a degree in the college, but from a different institution, so I will allow Ed, since this is his, his, his home unit. In a second, Ed, we'll come back to you for that, okay? <laughs> Two seconds. Entering now our bachelor's candidates from the College of Engineering, led by Gonflaniers Alejandro Diaz and Parker Ruth. Alejandro is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Bioengineering. Parker is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Bioengineering and a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. Well, I've been watching the engineers come through now, but I want to just follow up on that education question, given your expertise. Well, one of the things we've learned in this last year is that as students, whether they're in kindergarten or whether they're in high school, they're going to connect around the world. So their education is going to matter, not just locally, but it's going to matter around the world. And we also know that something that was exposed during the pandemic, education equity and inequity is going to matter. So we've got, we've got to have educators now. And think about the importance now of, of just what it means to be a teacher and what it means to be an educator at this, at this moment. It means really thinking about systems change, thinking about equity and thinking about justice and thinking about access and how that's tied to the well-being of our democracy. It's never been more important than, than in this time. And it's always been important to, it's been the engine of our democracy. Joy and I both teach about philosophy of education and history of education. And those disciplines and actually those areas of study are, are essential now and, and they've always been essential. But, but that's one of the things that we're going to be actually thinking about um, in this coming years. What damage was done this last year? Um, and, and how do we need to bridge some gaps that have, that have been created to be during the course of this pandemic and, and the lack of access for so many kids. So, so educators in this next generation who are walking into schools now have serious and important work to do. They're frontline workers right now. So, that, so I, I think one of the things we need to do is really recognize the value of what it means to be educators, principals, teachers, in classrooms. That's the work of justice right now. It's a good point. I think we're actually, I mean, uh, I think there, all of a sudden people are recognizing the value of education. Even, um, I'm seeing more applications to our graduate program. I'm hearing graduate, I mean, every, the moment is sort of said, oh, we got a retool for this, Joy. Are you seeing the same thing? It's all of a sudden this resurgence in that interest in education? I am. I think people were questioning whether um, applications would go down at graduate school. They have not gone down. They've actually gone up. And they actually, we have... Um, more diversity of uh, demographic diversity in our applicant pool at the graduate level. So I do think people see it as a calling, people see it as a value, um, not just for personal gain, but to, like I said, for the public good. This is where I make a fool of myself as an amateur historian, but you know, the horror of World War II, World War I, World War II, the Depression, led to some good things. Uh, you know, the United Nations, you know, thinking more about human rights. Um, the reckoning of the pandemic, as, as intense and short it has been, has led to things that, that Ed was talking about. Do you feel that some good can come out of this? I hope so. Uh, like I said, I see these faces and I see a lot of good in them, and I think um, the openness for opportunity and new thinking will pay off. Please welcome the candidates from the College of the Environment, 
Carrying the gonfalon is Isak Mazengia. Isak is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science and Terrestrial Resource Management. Well, it's, it's, it's good to see Isak again. I had him on the purple carpet and we had some audio challenges, but what a remarkable graduate and obviously demonstrative of, of the people who are graduating from our university today and the leadership they'll take, especially around the environment. I think that's the other thing that we've learned from the pandemic. You know, we saw CO2 levels go down for a brief shining moment because we weren't flying and driving everywhere. But I think there's now uh, at the highest levels a real understanding that things have to be done differently in terms of sustainability and environment. And if I can give a shout out after, after a moment. <laughs> Candidates from the Information School are now entering. The Information School Gonfalon is carried by Gonfaloniers Kiran Pradhan and Ekoli Vondala. Kiran is receiving a Bachelor of Science yes, in sense. Informatics, Data Science. Ekoli is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Informatics and a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. What were you saying, Ed? Two groups have, have passed through um, arts and sciences. Dean Bob Stacy is, is um, retiring after this year, and Bob's been a distinguished scholar and distinguished dean at this university, and so congratulations to Bob. Um, he's been an incredible leader on this campus. And College of the Environment, our colleague Lisa Gromlich, who founded that college, which is an incredible college and a dynamic college. These, these students are going to go out and do amazing things. But we just want to give recognition to Lisa Gromlich all for, for being an incredible leader in this community. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point, and especially from this part of the world where we take it so seriously, the environment and our connection to the environment. From the Michael G. Foster School of Business are now entering, led by Gonflanier Whaley Lin. Whaley is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration, Finance and Information Systems. Well, Foster School of Business, uh, that's a very good example. I think before the pandemic, we were seeing a lot of people were questioning whether the MBA was going to survive and was an outdated degree. And I hear that you know applications to MBAs across the country are up like crazy. So people obviously are still seeing the value to that joint. Yeah, I, it's, there's 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 so much to do. <laughs> there's so many opportunities with an MBA and other um, master's degrees, and these students are going to do all kinds of different things with it. I think people have a very kind of a tunnel vision about what that degree will allow you to do, but we're going to see from all of these students the variety of things that you can do with an MBA all over the place, all over the world. Um, and before the Foster School, we saw the Information School, and one of the more uh, service-oriented things that came out of the iSchool this year, uh, the Center for the Informed Public, and that's something I had uh, a collaboration with with that center. And they just did incredible work, especially during the time of the election, just to bring down the temperature around the level of misinformation and disinformation, and had first-hand access to Google and Facebook and other companies to tell them when things were going wrong on their, on their platform. So that's true leadership, and that's the University of Washington yet again being there. Our colleagues, Kate Starbird, um, it seemed like she was on the radio every week. And, and just marking that distinction that you just said, um, Hanson, um, misinformation and disinformation of what constitutes the truth. And there again is that public scholarship of researchers talking to the general public. What constitutes the truth? And I gotta tell you, I mean, I know Kate Starbird was essential, but dangerous too. I know the level of threats that she gets. And so it's amazing that these people continue to be on the front lines because they know that that information and that work matters and that truth matters as well. So. Um, yeah, that, uh, you're right about all those people doing that amazing stuff and I think it's made a difference because they've also said the pandemic wasn't just a health pandemic, it was an information pandemic, right? And, and when these things happen, there's a lot of anxiety and people just don't know who to trust. And so they're looking for different sources and sometimes alternative sources. And that's where I felt like the University of Washington did rise to the occasion because we put ourselves out there as a trusted source for everything from health to politics to economics to all the changes that we were facing. And then we brought that to the table. I think that's just uh, couldn't be more timely. I think it's also a perfect example of how <clears throat> one unit can have a huge impact, that we don't seek to just be in our silos, that it was about misinformation everywhere. That's good for all of us to learn more about how to discern good from bad, good information from bad information. Absolutely, and that's what universities do well, if they do it well. Bachelor candidates from the School of Nursing and the School of Medicine are now entering. 
The School of Nursing is led by Gon Flaneer, <coughs> Liam Malpass, who is receiving a Doctor of Nursing Practice, Family Nurse Practitioner. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Medicine is Kai Broughton, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science. Welcome now the Bachelor candidates from the College of Built Environments. They are led by Gon Flaneer Kai Farmer, who is receiving a Master of Landscape Architecture. of bachelor candidates entering are from the School of Public Health and the School of Social Work. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Public Health is Shraddha Mala, who is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Public Health, Global Health. The School of Social Work candidates are led by gonflanier Evelyn Fay Tagana Romano, who is receiving a Master of Public Health, Global Health, General Track, and a Master of Social Work clinical social work. Well, if these people aren't heroes now, they're probably going to be future heroes given what we've learned from the last year and a half in terms of both public health, mental health, and what we need to do out there on the front lines, on our streets, in the homes, and everything else. Social work and public health matter. They do, and they're interconnected. <clears throat> I'm glad to see them <laughs> positioned this way. They are deeply interconnected. Like again, it's the power of interdisciplinarity. Um, these students have already been tried and tested. They're ready for whatever their future holds, whether it's graduate school or work in a clinic or a hospital uh, and other kinds of um, public health spaces. They're ready. We think about what we learned this, this last year. If someone would have told me three years ago that I'd be wearing a mask, I, I wouldn't believe them. But just think about the kind of information we have now, why we should wear a mask. What does it mean to flatten the curve? What does it mean to pay attention to health metrics? All of those things that we've learned are research to practice. And, and these students are going into, into fields that are going to make the world better, that cut across disciplines. Global health talking to medicine, medicine talking to, to arts and humanities, all of this, and, and education and teachers talking to, to scientists, all of this um, transdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, and making our world better. So trans, yeah, and I'm just looking, it's dangerous obviously to look at these faces and these names and make any, reach any conclusions, but it, on, the, on the face of it, there's such incredible diversity. It's, just, it's, it's wonderful to see this at this time. It's like we need all these people from their different walks of life, from their different identities, from who the communities they represent to be doing this. So. Hanson, I think that word, we, we need these students now. We need this generation, this graduating class, like we've never needed a class before. And I think that's what, that's what makes this, this 2021 class so special. So whether you're sitting in your, in your rooms, in your bedrooms, in your kitchen, just again, going back to Joyce's point, just keep in mind that you're making history by, by virtue of seeing yourself on the screen right now. Joy, you mentioned time capsule. It would be very interesting to see if we could actually track these people 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now and see what they've done in the world after what they've experienced this year. That would be a completely worthwhile experiment. Um, I'm sure the Alumni Association would be incredibly happy to participate in that. Because it will be fascinating to think about how this time impacted their future choices. There are all kinds of studies like this, you know, whether, you know, whether like you said, World War II, World War I, the Vietnam War. Life events, world events change trajectories. It'll be fascinating to see five years, like you'd said before, 10 years, 20 years down the line, how their experiences and living during this time inform who they become as humans and um, members of the world community. Yeah. It won't be the class of 2021, it'll be the class of rising to the occasion. <laughs> totally, yeah. Yeah, there have been documentaries that have been done where they, they do actually choose a select number of people and they just go back to them every few years and see what stories they can tell about them. So this is really great.
Now entering our members of the Dean's Party, led by Dean's Marshal, Jeshana Schmidt of the School of Public Health. Now entering are the members of the President's Party, led by University Marshal Joseph James of the Information School. We'd like to begin this ceremony by acknowledging the land on which the university rests, the land of the Coast Salish peoples, which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Today, we celebrate together. The commencement exercises of the University of Washington will be opened with the presentation of the colors by the joint ROTC color guard and the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by a choir composed of students from the School of Music. Please rise.
Please be seated. And welcome to the 146th commencement exercises of the University of Washington. My name is Joseph James and I'm an associate professor in the Information School. On ceremonial occasions such as this, however, I'm honored to serve as the University Marshal and welcome you all officially to this ceremony. As you can see, we're here in the Sylvan Grove. Behind us are the four ionic columns that formed the grand entrance to the first Territorial University of Washington building, which was constructed on a rise in what is now downtown Seattle in 1861. These columns resonate with the dreams and visions of the people who raised them in a village of only 300 over a century and a half ago. They symbolize the never-ending pursuit of knowledge, truth, and artistic expression always enduring and always new. Our first graduates celebrated in front of these columns, and when the downtown building came down, only these cedar columns were saved. They were erected on what's now the quad, and there they played a prominent role in early graduations. Ceremonies were held here in the Sylvan Grove when the columns were moved to this location in 1921. But for nearly 100 years, no class graduated in front of these original columns. Last year, that changed, and today, the class of 2021 makes its own history as quite possibly the last class to celebrate before these iconic reminders of our university's birth. To all the graduates who are joining us today from across the United States and around the world, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to Commencement 2021, Celebrating Worldwide. With us today is the leadership of the University of Washington, and I'd like to introduce them at this time. First, the chair of the University's Board of Regents, Mr. Rogelio Riojas. Also joining us remotely today are the other members of the University's Board of Regents, Vice Chair Blaine Tamaki, William S. Ayer, Joe Benalil, Joanne R. Harrell, Jeremy Jake, Libby G. McPhee, Christina Pagosian, the student regent, Dr. Constance W. Rice, and David Zeke. Next, the president of the University of Washington, Professor Anna Mari Kause, and University Provost, Mark Richards. We are also pleased to welcome the deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges. Thank you all for joining us today. Please be seated. President Kause will preside over today's exercises. Please join me in welcoming her to the lectern. Thank you, Dr. James, and welcome, graduates, families, and friends. We're so pleased that you've joined us today from across the United States and around the world. The international reach of the University of Washington is never more apparent than at these graduation exercises. Huskies from over 30 countries are tuning in to participate in today's ceremony. We see you all. We see you in China. India, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. We see you in New Zealand and Guam, in Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. We see you in Germany, France, Poland, and the United Kingdom. We see you in Brazil and Panama and Costa Rica. And of course, we see our neighbors in Canada and Mexico and all of the graduates here in Washington State and around the United States. Welcome to all of you. And congratulations, class of 2021. We are so proud of you and all that you have accomplished throughout your time at the University of Washington. I know this past year has been difficult in ways you couldn't have predicted when you began your degree. Your incredible persistence and adaptability in achieving this milestone has shown the world what you are capable of. And we can't wait to see the impact that you'll have because we've seen that you can rise to a challenge. You're a special class shaped by the pandemic and graduating in one of the most dynamic and fraught periods in our history. I recognize that the pandemic, as well as other traumas that may have affected you in your time here, have been part of what shaped you 
But let's take a moment to acknowledge that they never defeated you. These past years will be part of your story, but your journey is much bigger than that, and you will define the impact that you have on the world. As you look back on your years at the University of Washington, now and in the months and years to come, I hope you'll reflect on the achievements that have made you the most proud. But I also hope that you'll remember the disappointments and the setbacks too. They are also an essential part of what makes your accomplishments extra special. They are a reminder that you earned this and they are proof that you can bounce back and that you can work your way even out of the darkest times. Those skills that you've, cul that you've cultivated here at the University of Washington will serve you well. Big challenges await you and all of us. Your talents and voices are essential to building a more equitable and sustainable world. Your new ideas and confidence will fuel the changes we so urgently need. Your optimism and collaborative spirit will help see you through. I, along with your teachers and mentors, are very excited to see what you'll do with your education and what doors will be unlocked by your new degree. One of the best things about being president of the University of Washington is learning about some incredibly positive change in the world and then finding out that the person responsible for it is a Husky. Each of you is a world full of potential. How will you use your knowledge, your empathy, your creativity and passion to answer the call to action? But for now, take a breath. You don't have to answer that question right now. This day is all about celebrating your graduation and all the people in your life who played a part in your success. On behalf of the University of Washington, thank you to all the moms and dads, grandparents, guardians, siblings, and children, to anyone you call family. You help make this day possible too. All the times you packed a school lunch, helped with homework, or were there for a hug after a tough day. Families, wherever you are, and whether you've ever set foot on our campus, please know we consider you Huskies too. You've been essential to your graduate's journey, especially during the hardest days of the pandemic. Today, we celebrate everyone who made this possible. In closing, graduates, I wish we could all be together side by side and in person for this very special moment, but nothing can diminish your achievements. Your university will always remember you as a special class who persevered and demonstrated such extraordinary commitment. Thank you for all that you've invested in yourselves. The world awaits you and the University of Washington will always be here for you. We are so proud to call you alumni and Huskies forever. Congratulations, class of 2021. Now, commencement is a memorable day, not only for our graduates, but also for our faculty who truly enjoy celebrating the accomplishments of their students. At commencement, we traditionally highlight faculty who've been recognized for their outstanding teaching. Here to do that today is the person who works most closely with the deans and faculty to shape your academic experience, our provost, Dr. Mark Richards. Thank you, President Kause. Each year, the university presents what are known as the Awards of Excellence to individuals whose mentorship and service have had a profound impact on the lives of students and the broader university community. I want to take a moment to honor several of those award winners now. This year, five faculty have received the Distinguished Teaching Award. They are Wiley Guh, Professor of Accounting, 
Wendy Barrington, Associate Professor of Child, Family, and Population Health Nursing and Associate Professor of Epidemiology. Theodore Andrew Myrie, Teaching Professor in Law. Andrea Carroll, Associate Teaching Professor of Chemistry. And Sarah Hasnera Zaman, Clinical Assistant Professor of Pediatrics. The recipient of the Marsha L. Landolt Distinguished Graduate Mentor Award is Leanne Campbell, Professor of Pathology. Finally, two graduate students with teaching responsibilities have received the Excellence in Teaching Award for 2021. They are Sarah Brucia Breitenfeld, Graduate Instructor in Classics, and Devin Geary, Teaching Assistant in Communications. These faculty inspire students to discover their passion for learning, create opportunities for them to make a real difference, and change the way students see the world. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of our faculty and teaching assistants for pulling their students, putting their students first during these unprecedented times. They have adjusted the way in which they teach to ensure that UW students and the graduates we are honoring today receive the best possible education. To the graduates, I would say that you have learned from the best, and now I can't wait to see how you will change the world. Since 1932, the university has presented medals to the graduating seniors with the most distinguished academic records at the university. One medal is awarded to a student who has completed at least three-fourths of his or her degree requirements at the university, and one is awarded to a student who entered the university with at least 60 transfer credits from a Washington Community College. This year's President's Medalists are Isak Manzigu of Shoreline, Washington, and Elizabeth Ann Yuki Lee of Woodenwell, Washington, who entered the UW from Everett Community College. Isak got an early start on his university career. As a second grader, he sat next to his dad in Susalo Library and pretended to study just like him. When he entered the University of Washington, Isak knew he wanted to study about the environment and have a positive impact on the world. Here, he found the perfect interdisciplinary approach combining his degree work with studies in political science and environmental policy. He was a four-year member of the ASUW Senate, a co-organizer of the College of the Environment Community Equity Initiative, and a member of the National Park Conservation Associate Northwest Student Leadership Council. ESAC is graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science and Resource Management. Congratulations, ESAC. And now, Elizabeth. When Elizabeth came to the University of Washington, she already had a broad background in marine science, having studied under UW faculty through Everett Community College's Ocean Research College Academy. Pursuing her studies in the program on the environment, she participated in data collection aboard the UW's research vessel, Rachel Carlson, interned with the National Marine Fishery Service, and volunteered her time to assist the Ship Operations Cooperative Program, a nonprofit organization of maritime industry leaders. She is graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor's of Art degree in Environmental Studies. Please join me in recognizing our two extraordinary President's Medalists. I would also like to recognize those students who are graduating today with the university's highest baccalaureate honors, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. The name of the honorees are listed in the commencement program. Since 1938, the university and the Alumni Association have presented an award to a former University of Washington student whose work has attained national or international prominence. The Alumna Summa Laude Dignitas Award 
which means alumni worthy of the highest praise, is the highest honor bestowed by the university on one of its graduates. Today, we add to the long and distinguished list of individuals who have received this award the name of Larry Gossett, a member of the King County Council for 27 years and a man who has devoted his life to public service and the cause of racial equity and justice. Mr. Gossett's efforts on behalf of the underrepresented and underprivileged began when he spent a year in Harlem with volunteers in service to America as an undergraduate. He founded the University of Washington's Black Student Union and helped organize nearly a dozen high school, middle school, and collegiate black student unions throughout the Seattle area. Mr. Gossett worked to establish a black studies program on campus, and he was the very first UW student to graduate with a degree in African American studies. As a councilman, Mr. Gossett dedicated his time to the reformation of the criminal justice system, better public transportation, and job opportunities for the poor and underrepresented minorities. In 1999, he led the effort to honor civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by naming King County after Dr. King and changing the county logo to his image. As a community activist, he traveled to Japan, Canada, Russia, and Nicaragua. He represented the King County Council on various trade missions to many countries in Asia and South America, as well as to South Africa and England. For his distinguished career as a public servant and all he has contributed to our city and its residents and the cause of social justice, his alma mater with great pride and admiration honors Larry Gossett with its 2021 Alumnus Summa Laude Dignatus. Student government is an important component of the governance of this institution, and its leadership is called on regularly to represent student views on a wide range of issues at the university. I am pleased to introduce to you now the President of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate, Aaron Yared, and the President of the Associated Students of the University of Washington, Camille Hatwig. First, let me address the obvious. This year was brutal. Pretending like it was a picnic would only be an insult to your achievement today. From nonstop political tension to figuring out whether investing in Dogecoin is a good idea, it's a wonder there was any time to keep up with classes. I'm sure many of you, like me, came into this year thinking that you were going to be able to build off of the momentum of last year, with that spring quarter online being a speed bump far behind us, only to find yourself stopped in your tracks with no end in sight. At the Graduate and Professional Student Senate, we realized that we were going to have to switch gears pretty quickly if we wanted to continue helping students at the levels that we did when we were in person. That was when we landed on a theme that I'm sure you've already heard many times this year, resilience. While you may be sick of hearing it, there really is no other way to describe how you all responded to the challenges of this year. Resilience is taking 100% of your classes online from dozens of time zones around the world. Resilience is working tirelessly to teach undergrads virtually, making sure every student receives the best education we can provide. Resilience is helping each other through Wi-Fi outages, through quarantine, through Zoom fatigue, through masks, through double masks, through your cat walking across your keyboard, unmuting you at the exact moment you burped, and now, even through vaccination naps. You are here, and you are a thousand times more resilient than anyone might have thought we would need to be for our education. As the brilliant Maya Angelou once said, if you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. It has been my honor to be your graduate and professional student body president this year because it has been anything but normal, and in celebrating an achievement like graduating after enduring the highs and lows of a pandemic, there is no question in my mind. You are amazing. Congratulations, class of 2021. Hello and congratulations to the class of 2021. 
My name is Camille Hatwig, and it's an honor to be speaking with y'all as this year's student body president. I want to start by admitting that this was a difficult speech to write. The mood in the air for many is not one of celebration. I want to commend you all for the strength that it took to get here. This past year and a half has not been simple or easy. I don't know any student who isn't grieving right now. Grieving the loss of a loved one, grieving the loss of the college experience that we wanted, grieving the loss of community, grieving for the pain we are all feeling in the world. It takes a unique level of strength, commitment to self, and commitment to bettering the world to make it here to graduation during such incredible circumstances. It's impossible not to feel and acknowledge the pain in this moment, but it's also impossible not to feel the love, hope, and connection we are leaving our Husky experience as different and better people than we entered, and that's because of each other. I vividly remember every moment when my community showed up for me over the past four years, in ways big and small, often in my hardest moments, and how those moments made me who I am today. I remember freshman year when my RA held my hand in one of the dorm lounges as I found out I didn't get into my first major, as I'm sure many of you can relate. Or a few months later, when I was crying and laughing with my friends in chemistry after we had all failed the same exam. Or even simply in moments like getting invited to my first college improv show by the first friend I made in ASU Dub. This same commitment to community was palpable when our student body showed up last summer to support the Black Student Union's protests on campus. And the continued student-led fights for racial justice and equity at UW. And that's what we're here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate each other, the love we have for each other, the love for our community, and our commitment to a better world. It hasn't been an easy path, but it's been a path filled with resilience, growth, strength, love, and most importantly, each other. Congratulations to the class of 2021. I can't wait to see what we create together. We are honored to have as our commencement speaker today an alumna of this university whose career over nearly half a century has made her one of the most respected and influential environmental scientists in the world. As the recently appointed Deputy Director for Climate and Environment in the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, Jane Lubachenko is now leading our nation's efforts to address issues surrounding climate change, sustainability, and scientific integrity. Dr. Lubachenko is the former ambassador of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Under Secretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmosphere. In 2014, she was appointed the U.S. Department of State's first science envoy for the ocean where it was her mission to create sustainable solutions to improve ocean health for the benefit of human communities around the globe. Dr. Lubachenko has been a prominent leader in the scientific community, serving as president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the International Council for Science, and as member of the executive committee of the National Academy of Sciences. Throughout her career, she has worked to improve communication between scientists, policymakers, and the general public. Dr. Lubachenko received her master's degree in zoology from the University of Washington and continued her graduate studies at Harvard, where she earned a PhD in marine ecology. She is recipient of numerous international awards and honors for her global efforts to protect the planetary environment. She's received 24 honorary doctorates, and in 2011, she was awarded the University of Washington's highest honor, the Alumna Summa Laude Dignata. Please join me in welcoming an extraordinary scientist and a dedicated public servant, Dr. Jane Lubachenko. Thank you, President Kause, and congratulations, class of 2021. I'm so honored to celebrate this singular milestone with you. You who persevered despite unprecedented challenges. 
how very proud you, your families and friends must be. I'm delighted to welcome you into the community of Husky alumni. In the time since I earned my master's degree in zoology from the College of Arts and Sciences in 1971, I've come to appreciate deeply the importance of dealing with surprises. Each of you has had to do exactly that in this last 16 months. An unprecedented pandemic surprised almost everyone and tested our mettle. COVID made us realize how important family and friends are and how important nature is to our mental and physical health. Now we treasure them more than ever. COVID made us realize the importance of healthcare workers and essential service workers, and it exposed stark racial and economic, economic injustice and inequities in our communities. We must now work to rectify those problems. I have no doubt that each of you was challenged by COVID in your own way. But the fact that you are here today says that you figured out a way to be resilient, to adapt to changing circumstances, to persevere despite the challenges, and to chart a different course to reach your goal. Hooray for you, and hooray for the faculty, staff, and friends and family who helped make it possible. This ability to be resilient is one of the smartest things that you can cultivate. You've already begun. Our world, every bit of it, is characterized by change. Some change is inevitable. Other changes can be slowed or halted completely. Regardless, cultivating a mindset that expects change, that is prepared for change, will help you respond effectively. Resilience is the watchword, not only for individuals, but for communities and institutions. The best preparation is to embrace the possibility of change and then act decisively to minimize or prevent changes that can be altered or act decisively to enhance resilience to those changes that are inevitable. Scientists can help sort out which is which. Here's an example from the ocean. I began studying marine biology because I was drawn to the mystery and the majesty of the ocean. I was and am passionately curious about how this vast network of ecosystems, which covers two thirds of our planet, actually works. I loved the rigor of science and the challenge of solving mysteries, but also the opportunity to do something useful. The ocean, too, is changing, changing dramatically. For most of human history, people believed that the ocean was so vast and so bountiful that humans didn't have the capacity to disrupt or deplete it. The conventional wisdom was that the ocean was too big to fail. I don't have to tell you how wrong that was. Now we deeply recognize the threats to our ocean, climate change, pollution, plastic waste, overfishing. We have overwhelming evidence that these problems are serious and they affect people everywhere, in coastal areas and far inland. However, awareness of the changes and the magnitude and sheer number of disasters has led to a new problem, paralysis and despair. Many people think that the ocean problems are just too overwhelming, too complicated to fix. And so a second narrative for the ocean has arisen. The ocean is simply too big to fix. That narrative is wrong. Its situation is not hopeless. I've witnessed how resilient ocean ecosystems and ocean people can be if given a chance and if we act soon enough. For example, depleted fisheries can recover if fishermen and fisherwomen work with scientists and managers to put in place the right incentives and management structure. Depleted and disrupted ecosystems can be transformed into lush, diverse, and vibrant ones following creation of a marine protected area that is fully protected from extractive and destructive activities. Around the world, we have example after example of local people, activists, business and government leaders, scientists rolling up their sleeves in training local knowledge and science and finding solutions that work. 
Now, these successes are not yet at the scale or pace of change that is needed, but they provide models and hope. Moreover, the world is just beginning to realize how very central a healthy ocean is to fixing big problems like climate change and food security. For example, ocean-based activities could provide as much as one-fifth of the carbon emission reductions we need to get us to the 1.5 degree target by 2050. Well-managed fisheries and aquaculture could produce up to six times more healthy, sustainable seafood by 2050, contributing significantly to global food security. In short, new science, new opportunities, and new hope. As a result, we are witnessing a new revolution in attitudes toward the ocean and actions to enhance its resilience and our resilience. So the ocean narrative is evolving. The ocean is not too big to fail, nor is it too big to fix, but it is too central and too big to ignore. Make no mistake, people need nature. We need healthy ecosystems. They are our life support systems. Our resilience depends on their resilience and our resilience depends on your resilience. You have firsthand experience with resilience. After more than a year of the pandemic, you've shown grit, determination, creativity, and passion just to be here today. In many ways, you may be better prepared than any class in history to enter a world that is more dynamic and fluid than ever before. You've had a front row seat to the challenges that are facing society today. So at a moment when we confront many of the most daunting challenges in history, you are well prepared. You enter a world in which we need you. Your knowledge, your skills, your attitudes, and your resilience position you well. And it fills me with joy to consider what your generation will do to these efforts already underway. And know this, you are not alone. The world you are entering is full of people working together to make a difference. We need and want your ideas, your voices, and your contributions. Together is the only way forward, and none of us can afford to sit this one out. Whatever you choose to do with your time, talent, and energy, I urge you to find a way to contribute to a better world. Service can take many forms to your family and friends, to your community, state, country, the world. They all matter and they're all connected. In just a few decades, I've seen how quickly our understanding of the world can change. I've seen how breakthrough innovations or community action can transform despair into hope. You are our agents of hope, and we need you, all of you, at the table for the work ahead. I wish you all a wonderful celebration for your outstanding achievements, and I can't wait to see what an impact you will make on the world. Congratulations, graduates. Be boundless. Be resilient and be you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to present the various degrees to all candidates. Candidates will be presented by the deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges and witnessed by the various faculties. Degrees will be conferred by the chair of the Board of Regents, Rogelio Riojas. Candidates for doctoral degrees will be presented by the several deans. For the School of Medicine, Vice Dean John T. Slattery. It is an honor to recommend the 262 candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Faculty of the School of Medicine, do you concur? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yay! Congratulations, graduates. We wish you the best. Thank you. Those uh, participating in today's ceremony will please stand with the other doctoral candidates when requested. Dean Gary Kyoto, School of Dentistry. 
It is my pleasure to present the candidates for Doctor of Dental Surgery. Faculty of the School of Dentistry, do you concur? We enthusiastically concur. Congratulations, graduates. For more than a year, you have faced unprecedented challenges and responded magnificently. I could not be more proud of you. Those participating in today's ceremony will please stand with the other doctoral candidates when requested. Tony Remby Dean, Mario L. Barnes, School of Law. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Law, I have the honor of presenting 171 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. Faculty of the School of Law, do you concur? We concur. Congratulations. Yahoo! Congratulations, graduates. We are incredibly proud of the dedication and resolve you exhibited in arriving at this moment. You are truly a class like no other. Those participating in today's ceremony will please stand with the other doctoral candidates when requested. Dean Sean Sullivan, School of Pharmacy. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, it is my honor to present the 106 <laughs> candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Faculty of the School of Pharmacy, do you concur? We concur. Congratulations. Congratulations. You did it. Congratulations, graduates. And congratulations to all Health Sciences graduates for helping vaccinate our community. Thank you. Associate Dean Kemma Cargill of the Graduate School. Joining us today are candidates who have completed all requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Education, Musical Arts, Physical Therapy, Audiology, and Nursing Practice. On behalf of the deans of the schools and colleges and the graduate faculty, I am pleased and honored to recommend these candidates for the highest degrees awarded by the university. Graduate faculty, do you concur? Yes, we do. Will all the doctoral degree candidates from all schools and colleges please rise? It is my distinct pleasure to present you, Regent Riojas, all of the doctoral degree candidates from the schools and colleges just presented. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculties of the respective schools, I am pleased to confer upon these candidates their respective doctoral degree. Congratulations. You have achieved high academic distinction, and this university salutes you. The names and degrees of this year's outstanding doctoral candidates can be found in the commencement program, which is linked on your screen. <laughs> candidates for master's degrees will be presented by Associate Dean David Layton of the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance and Associate Dean Cargill of the Graduate School. On behalf of the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance, I am honored to present these candidates to receive their respective master's degrees. Faculty of the Evans School, do you concur? We proudly concur. Yeah! Woo! So excited. Congratulations, graduates. We are so very proud of you. Those participating in today's ceremony will please stand with the other master's candidates when requested. Candidates for the various master's degrees for all schools and colleges will please rise. Yay! Oh, we got We're graduating!
On behalf of the deans of the schools and colleges and the graduate faculty, I'm honored to present these candidates to receive their respective master's degrees. Graduate faculty, do you concur? Yes, we do. It is my distinct honor to present you, Regent Riojas, all of the master's degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the graduate faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your master's degree. Congratulations. The name of this year's outstanding master's degree candidates can be found in the commencement program, which is linked on your screen. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the various colleges and schools of the university will be presented by the several deans. The candidates who have been accepted by the general faculty of the university for their respective degrees are listed in the commencement program. Presenting bachelor's candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences is Dean Robert Stacy. President Kause, I believe you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. James. Dean Stacy and I have been colleagues for well over 30 years. In fact, we were at graduate school together, although we didn't know each other at the time. He will be leaving us this year, and I can tell you, his warmth and wisdom and steady hand when confronting the complex challenges this university has faced will be missed dearly. Dr. Stacy joined us from Yale University as a history professor, and he's been making history here ever since. He chaired the history department for many years, served as a divisional dean for over a decade, and became dean of the College of Arts and Sciences in 2013. He inspired teaching an unwavering dedication to the foundational importance of a liberal arts education, and this has served this university, countless graduates, and our entire region in ways that I know we will look upon with growing admiration over many, many years to come. Dean Stacy leaves our largest college in the best shape it's ever been in and well positioned for the future. No one has served with greater distinction. Please join me in expressing our appreciation to Dean Stacy for his extraordinary contributions to making this a better university. President Kause, thank you for a completely unexpected honor. <laughs> Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences will please rise. Feliz We did it. Woohoo! Go Dogs! Woo! Go Dogs! Go Dogs! It is my honor to present these candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, do you concur? Yes, indeed. Congratulations, graduates. You are magnificent. <laughs> Dean Mia Tuan, College of Education. Will candidates from the College of Education please rise? Yeah. 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 Congratulations, class of 2021. We did it. Yay!
I am proud to present these candidates for Bachelor of Arts degrees in Early Childhood and Family Studies and Education, Community and Organizations and to recommend that they be awarded their degrees. Faculty of the College of Education, do you concur? We concur. Well done. Yay. Congratulations, graduates. Your faculty are very proud of you. Dean Nancy Albritton, College of Engineering. Candidates from the College of Engineering, please rise. Let's go, Huskies. Yay! I am most pleased to present these candidates of the College of Engineering for the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering, Bioengineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering, Computer Engineering, Computer Science, Electrical Engineering, Human-Centered Design and Engineering, Industrial and Systems Engineering, Material Science and Engineering, and Mechanical Engineering, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Faculty of the College of Engineering, do you concur? Engineering concurs. Congratulations, graduates. We wish you the very best. Associate Dean Bruce Nelson, College of the Environment. Candidates from the College of the Environment, will you please rise? It is my honor and my pleasure to present these candidates of the College of the Environment for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources, and Bachelor of Science in Aquatic and Fishery Sciences, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Faculty of the College of the Environment, do you concur? We, we concur. concur. Congratulations, graduates. We look forward to seeing the amazing things you're going to accomplish. <laughs> Dean Anind Day of the Information School. Candidates from the Information School will please rise. It gives me great pleasure to present the candidates of the Information School for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Informatics and to recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degrees. Faculty of the Information School, do you concur? Enthusiastic yes. 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 yes! Congratulations, graduates. I wish you the brightest futures and I can't wait to see what you accomplish. Dean Frank Hodge, Michael G. Foster School of Business. Candidates from the Michael G. Foster School of Business, please rise. We're done! Foster 2021! I'm so happy, guys. Love you all. Yay! Yay. Woo! Go Ducks! Let's go! It is my honor and privilege to present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Foster School of Business and recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Faculty of the Foster School of Business, do you concur? Yes! 
Absolutely. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great job, everybody. Good luck. Congratulations, graduates. Well done. <laughs> Dean Azida Imami, School of Nursing. From the number one public school of nursing in nation, will you praise rise? We did it, guys. It's my pleasure and honor to present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing and recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degrees. Faculty of the School of Nursing, do you concur? Congratulations, nurses. Congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. Vice Dean John Slattery. School of Medicine. Will the bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine please rise? <laughs> it's a privilege to present these bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine in the specialized fields of medical technology, prosthetics and orthotics, and physician's assistants, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Faculty from the School of Medicine, do you concur? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yay! Congratulations to all of those graduating. We wish you the best. Thank you. <laughs> Associate Dean Vikram Prakash, College of Built Environments. Will the candidates from the College of Built Environments please rise? It is my honor to present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in architecture, landscape architecture, construction management, and community and environmental planning, and to recommend that they be awarded the respective bachelor's degrees. Faculty of the College of Built Environments, do you concur? We concur. Congratulations, graduates. The College of Built Environments could not be prouder. Associate Dean Tessa Evans Campbell, School of Social Work. Candidates from the School of Social Work, please rise. <laughs> On behalf of the Social Work faculty, it, must, it is my great honor and privilege to present these candidates for their bachelor's degrees in social welfare and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Faculty of the School of Social Work, do you concur? Joyfully, yes. yes. Woohoo! Congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. Dean Hillary Godwin, School of Public Health. The candidates from the School of Public Health will please rise. It is with much pleasure that I present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Public Health and recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Faculty of the School of Public Health, do you concur? Yes, Public Health. Congratulations, graduates. We couldn't be prouder of everything that you've done to contribute to our communities during the pandemic and we can't wait to see what you're gonna do. Will all bachelor's degree candidates please rise? It is my distinct honor to present to you, Regent Riojas, all of the bachelor's degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. 
On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculty of the university, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your respective bachelor's degree. You may now turn your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations. Congratulations to all our graduates. All of today's participants will receive a copy of the class photo that you just saw on your screen. In addition, a memento of this day will be mailed to you soon as a lasting record of our ceremony. The School of Music Choir will now lead us in the singing of Rise Up With Pride for Washington. The words to the song are printed on the inside of the back cover of the commencement program. The audience will please rise. Rise up with pride for Washington, for purple and for gold, from far and wide we meet in town, as hearts is proud and bold. Oh, Washington, we hail to thee, honor, truth, integrity, forever shine from lake to shore, your light upon us. Congratulations once again to all of today's graduates. We truly appreciate your taking the time to join us for these commencement exercises. We send you all of our very best wishes for your health and safety and that of your family and friends with high hopes for brighter and better days for us all. Now, stay tuned until the end of the recessional for a surprise appearance by everybody's favorite Husky. The 146th commencement exercises of the University of Washington are now closed.